So what that means is that from a hormonal perspective, the body doesn't know the difference between having a low grade underlying infection and having a deadline. It's yeah. going to elicit the same response that we'll see here, which raises our question when we see cortisol off like we do here where it's high, what is it responding to? What are the stressors, emotional, physical, chemical? The goal is not just, oh, let's just lower cortisol. The goal is to identify what it's responding to, help remove those stressors or rebalance them so that the body can go back to homeostasis on its own, right. balance on its own, okay? So in this case, to, to briefly talk about cortisol here, we see that it's high like we saw in that graph and like we see the levels here. It's high in the morning and then eventually finds its place back to normal later at night. Um, this person would experience <clears throat> sometimes insomnia in the middle of the night. So, you know, we start this reading in the morning, but it doesn't say we know when cortisol started rising. So her insomnia at 3, 4, 5 a.m. was most likely mediated by cortisol. Mm -hmm. And that could be, um, that's where we start to, to dig a little bit deeper in each person's case. Is it stress from work? Is it stress from um, their family life? Is it stress from an underlying infection they have? Food, what does their diet look like? So we dig deeper here, but I wanna plant that seed to say that's what the significance of this cortisol response is, and then how can we help that individual specifically? And this one is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. So this this patient is pretty significant up until mm -hmm. about that five, six, right. maybe eight o'clock period. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. And to talk about how this feels, what this means, <laughs> we want you to know what to look for. What to look for. This means this can mean either like grogginess and difficulty upon waking in the morning, or it can also mean just up. And almost an anxious kind of feeling, like in the fight or flight, fight yeah. or flight. Bing, gotta yeah. go, gotta go, gotta go. Really I'm, edgy, I'm internal rushed. tremor. Yes, yes. Exactly. When everything is fine, mm -hmm. like no particular reason. Yeah, exactly. It can mean sleep issues, as I mentioned, insomnia, difficulty falling asleep, or difficulty um, staying asleep. It can mean craving salt. It can mean craving sweets. It can mean water retention getting sick all the time, could be gut issues like acid reflux or bloating, puffiness, puffiness, other hormone imbalances. Mm -hmm. So that's that's to give you an idea, that's what cortisol can, can mediate and how it can impact how we feel. It's a powerful hormone. It really is. Okay, melatonin, we hear a lot about the melatonin too, and a lot of people are taking melatonin. They are. So melatonin is our primary sleep hormone. It has an inverse response to cortisol. So it's lowest in the morning with the sun and highest at night. We start releasing melatonin in response to darkness. So artificial light can help suppress melatonin. In this particular individual, she was actually supplementing with melatonin. Those are high numbers. Probably because of the high cortisol. Mm -hmm. um, but she would supplement with one milligram of melatonin at bedtime underneath the tongue. And that can actually play a role into those cortisol readings we were seeing before, but nonetheless, that requires more of a bio-individual approach. Um, but the higher levels of melatonin that we're seeing here is due to the supplementation. So it's high in the morning because it's still in her system, and it's high, but you see almost half of what it was at night because it's getting out of her system, but nonetheless, she's going to supplement with it that night too. Okay. If we see low melatonin in some of these tests, which is pretty common, my first thought is what is cortisol doing? Second thought, what is what are some of these other hormones doing? Third thought is what do nutrients look like? Do we have the nutrients to produce melatonin? And then fourth is what is light doing? Light is so key. Light is huge. Right, we're all inside. We need natural yeah. light to the skin, to your eyes, mm -hmm. right? We're walking around in our sunglasses and we forget to take those off and actually get yeah. sunlight through your eyes back to the pineal gland mm -hmm. to help naturally regulate your melatonin levels. Exactly. And is the person looking at artificial light oh, before they go to sleep? Yes. So a computer, our cell phones, TV, lights in the house, <laughs> all of those will 
trick our brain into thinking it's daylight so then we don't release melatonin so then affects our sleep. So just some things to consider.